That's okay. <laughs> Good. We'll probably just wait a few more minutes and let people join. I think that with here's a few more people. Cool. Gosh, sorry about that, everybody. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Nice to see you, Amanda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely not the most technical savvy person at all times either. I'll be the first to admit. Um, I've never had this happen though before. So lesson learned. I guess that's a lesson learned. Pamela, where are you joining from? I'm in Taos, New Mexico. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's a beautiful, it's a really beautiful area of the country. Uh, yeah, I really like it here. It's really pretty good. You guys all over? Uh, I'm from Eugene, Oregon. Kelly's up in, I'm, I'm going to just butcher it, Kelly. So I'll let you say, is it Cock? Yeah. Cochrane? Co Cochrane, up in okay. Alberta. I was like, I am not very good. Some of the times I say the Canadian stuff and I'm like, oh, I just totally said that wrong. And people are like, yeah, not cool. <laughs> it's like I tried. So we've got some Saskatchewan, more Alberta, Ontario. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, I love, that's what the funnest part about these kinds of things is it's like people from every, you get to meet with people from everywhere. So mm -hmm. nice little. Um, maybe we could probably get started and I'll just email everybody who signed up a link to the video. I'll upload it to YouTube tomorrow, probably, and just email everybody a link with it that signed up since. And then they can still see it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll see too if they try to join, right? Like if they get yep. your email late and try to come in. Yeah, they should be, they'll still be able to join as we keep going. So. Um, I guess I'll just say, I'll start by saying like, welcome to everybody. And yeah, sorry for the technical difficulties in the beginning there. Um, we are going to be recording this. So if you don't want to have your face on the video, usually it's just going to be the Kelly. It should just probably be Kelly's screen for the most part. But if you, just in case you want to turn your camera off, you're more than welcome to do that. And then um, I'll just make sure everybody's muted. And if you do have any questions, feel free to just pop into the chat and type out your questions as we go. And if you do have a piece of rope with you to practice tying, we're gonna be tying in knots ourselves. So um, if you wanna take them, if you do need to grab a minute, maybe to go grab some rope, um, now would be the chance while we kind of give a minute for other people to still kind of sneak their way in here. And even with that guys, some of the knots that I'm going to teach you that we're going to go over today, there's um, one where it's going to be specifically about tying two pieces of rope together. And if they're different diameters, they don't have to be to learn it. But if you have two pieces, otherwise you can just do it on the ends and it doesn't matter. It's the same difference. But then I do want to look at a couple of hitches. So I just, you can do it on your arm which works fine, but I also have a dowel that I'm going to show you it on so you can see it, something to tie around. And there's one hitch that I want to show you that I'm going to use a carabiner for, but if you have any, you can even hook it through your thumb to see how it looks. So you don't have to have a carabiner. It's just something to hook it through, right? Awesome. Um, cool. Well, we've got about, I feel pretty good about the amount of people who made it yeah all things considered, all things considered. <laughs> yep. better than it was just you and me hanging out <laughs> oh, I was like why isn't nobody joining I was like this is so strange I was like usually there's people like a few minutes before well uh, now I don't know why at least we figured it out so thanks I don't know if Christy made it in here but she emailed me first and much appreciated about that so hopefully she'll make it yeah um I guess if you're ready to like probably start sure. probably start I definitely can I'm just gonna take this all right 
Okay, so my name is Kelly Beaton and I run an adventure tourism company in Alberta called Hunter Valley Adventures. We do a variety of different things there. Our main focus has always been on the water. So a lot of the knots that we're going to look at today have a very applicable use when you're into river sports and doing water type activities, but they're also really good for hiking and camping and those types of things. So we'll go through all that. I've been doing this kind of stuff for over 20 years now. I'm also a teacher and a guidance counselor too. So there's that education piece. Um, and we do all sorts of stuff between the rafting, we do survival skills, bushcraft type work, um, outdoor education work with schools and kids. We are working on different levels of um, water experiences. So there's rafting, but we also do kayaking and canoeing. We're starting to do more of that. We're working with a stuff company this year. So all sorts of different stuff. If you're ever in Alberta and you're looking for somewhere fun to play and we may have a women who explore trip coming up in the same space. So I think we've got a couple of activities that we're looking at launching this summer too, hopefully. Everything will get itself sorted out here and we'll be able to do some of those activities within the parameters of where we are with the COVID stuff. But that's basically me in a nutshell. Um, I'm gonna try to talk and show, I practice this with my partner so he could see, to make sure that we could see the knots well on the screen. But if at any time you can't, just let me know so I can adjust the video of it as we go through it. But we're gonna talk really quickly about just certain things about knots to remember and things about knot terminology that we want to make sure that we're, we're knowing and remembering too. Um, one of the most important things I think is it doesn't matter what type of rope that you're using, but it's remembering and acknowledging that anytime you tie a knot in a rope, you now have weakened the rope, okay? A rope is in its strongest form when there is nothing in it. So these knots that we're going to learn are purposeful and they have a task to do and we appreciate that, but we know we're doing so that they create wear on our rope and that they also actually, in all honesty, weaken our ropes. So I do think it's important that because sometimes I think people feel like knots make everything stronger and it's like, no, they hold things in place, but we are weakening what the load of the rope is if we're ever looking at that sort of information. Okay. Um, a few things that we'll talk about as we're going through when I'm talking about the rope, if I say the free end, um, I'm talking about this piece, the loose piece that has nothing attached to it. And then the working end or the load end would be the piece that would have the pole on it. And so that's where the tension would be. So we want to make sure that we keep those terms straight in our minds. Um, I may also use the term bite, but that's just, just a loop in the rope. If I talk about us making a bite, that's all we're doing with that one. Uh, and a bend is when we're tying two different pieces of rope together. So that's the difference when we're, a sheet bend is really the only one that we're gonna look at today about how to do that. Um, but knowing that there is a difference between a bend and a knot if you hear people talking about them. So that matters too, okay. Any questions so far? Everything looks good? Awesome, okay. So things we wanna to remember too when we're doing our knots and now this is where we start to get a little bit picky and they're not always necessary, especially when we're learning and we're figuring it out for the first time. But ideally when we're talking about pieces at the end and what's hanging off and what's left, so our tail of our knot, we wanna keep it about the distance of our fist. That's an easy reference point. Um, they give a number, they say about three inches, but in all honesty, if you just make sure that the end of your rope that is loose is about the same as the distance of your fist, you'll be in good shape. All right, and less chance of things happening like slipping it, getting mixed up or people tripping on it. We wanna to try to keep them tidy. It just makes it easier at the end of the day when we're undoing them, if we can keep them tidy. Uh, it sucks if you're in a situation where you need to get your knot undone and you're fighting with it, it's not fun. So keeping your knots tidy definitely helps with that. And then the other thing is we may talk about, there's a couple of knots that we'll do tonight where we're gonna talk about dressing the knot and all that means is making it look good it's like getting ready to go out for a night after you've been in quarantine for three months right we're going to dress the knot make it look fancy <laughs> and head it out so it feels good about itself okay um that's sort of a piece of that in there any questions about 
those when I use those terms. Yeah. This is the only weird thing about doing classes on video, and I've found this before too, is you the feedback from a face-to-face in-person class is missing. So you're like, is everybody good? <laughs> and you speak to the void of the room that you're in. <laughs> I know, it's always a challenge. Uh, it's always kind of funny. Um, the first knot that I'm going to teach you tonight is called the reef knot. All right. So this is used often to tie bundles together. It's basically to take the end. So if you have your rope, you're going to want two ends. Oh, thank you, Pamela. You can use the reaction button. And I did see your thumbs up and that was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So if you, if you're using one piece of rope, you're going to want to have both ends, one end in each hand so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use two pieces of rope, but they're the same diameter as if they're the same. And I have it in my hand. Okay, but you can definitely do this with one piece of rope and you just have the two ends. So the reason we use a reef knot, I'm going to adjust my camera angle here so you can see it hopefully. The reason we use it is to tie the knot together to make a bundle to make a little thing for hanging maybe. Um, I use it to hang pictures actually if I put string between holes on the top of a picture I'll tie a reef knot on the top. People use it in macrame. It's a really popular macrame knot actually because it the way it connects things. This striped rope is my right hand and the plain rope is in my left hand, just so everybody knows, okay? So I take, I have these two ends and I'm going to take the striped end in my right hand and I'm going to cross it over the left so that it's as such. And then I'm going to bring it underneath and up like that and to me when I'm looking down at it to you it looks like a frown probably but to me it looks like a smile <laughs> and that's how I know I've got it in the right spot and it's twisted like that okay then the striped one's now in my left hand once again I'm going to cross over and moving just that striped one through so it starts to look like this and then if I hold the ends and I pull that's it that's my little reef knot and it connects and ties things together really nice. Okay. You can see it, it's neat and tidy on either end. The big thing is this loose end, right, is at the top of both sides. I'll definitely do it one more time. I was going to ask the same thing, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All good. So we have our two ends of our rope. This is the right. This is the left, stripes in the right. I go right over left. And I give it a little twist so it looks like that. And when I'm looking down at it, it's like I'm looking at a smile. Okay. Once I'm here, my striped one is now in my left. So I go left over right. Always only moving the striped one. It goes underneath and comes through. So both my tails are at the top. I give it a pull and I've connected it and tied it up in a nice pretty bundle. Now I have no problem doing it a third time. I will be honest with you. I've been doing stuff outdoors for over 20 years. I'm probably starting to get close to 30 now if I age myself and knots have always been a thing I need to practice and think hard about and screw up on consistently and need to redo. So <laughs> having a good app on your phone is not a bad idea. Something you can reference really quickly. Without reference to what? Okay, striped in yellow, got it, Erica, or Pamela, thank you. Okay, I'll try that again. Okay, so I have the striped one and the plain one. Striped one goes over the top. So we've got the X there. And then I just bring it under the plain one so that there's a bit of a twist. Okay. And everyone's like that. Then again, I take my striped over my plain one 
bring my striped one through the hole that now exists there. So we can see hopefully through the camera that there's a hole there. Bring that striped one through. And then I give it a pull. Both tails are at the top or at the bottom, I guess, if you're looking at it that way. How's that look? How are we feeling about our reef knot? I feel pretty good. I think um, it's hard when you have two different knot color, like the rope colors and I have the one. So I'm like, am I really doing it right? But it does look right actually, which I'm excited about. Yeah, and that's where you can tell. Honestly, with this one, the thing is, if these two ends aren't either both on the top or both on the bottom, you've gone and tied yourself a thief knot and those will slip out really easy, okay? So that's the big thing to check to see if you've done it right. Make sure both your ends are in the same location. Doesn't matter if it's which side it is, as long as they match each other. That's a good tip. Cool. It is like doing the first step of tying your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, are we okay to move on to the next one? I'm ready. I, I think everybody okay. else is ready. Well, thank you for thumbs up, those of you who give them either visually or with the reaction. I appreciate it. It's awesome. So the next one I want to show you is a sheet bend. So this is the one where we tie two pieces of rope together and often we will do it when you have two pieces of rope that aren't the same diameter. So you need to make sure that they're not slipping, right? I have one. This plain one is a smaller diameter than the striped one now. If you only have one piece of rope, though, it's fine. You can do it with the two ends. It's still the same thing. It'll work just fine. Okay. Now this one, we make a bite. All right. So what was the name of this knot? Sheet bend yeah it's a sailing knot so and they used to tie it a certain way to i don't know much about sailing but it did something to hold the lines from the sails a certain way in the wind so that it couldn't slap, slap back really right so the ropes that they were using would often be different length or different widths okay so the first thing you need to do is make a bite so just have a loop at the one side of your knot. Okay. Then with the loose end, you're gonna come through the hole and you're going to go around both pieces so that you're through the hole and you are around, okay? And it looks kind of like that. And you're going to take the loose end and bring it through this loop so that it's poking out and it's underneath, right? We can see that it goes under there. And then I'm just going to pull it and it creates that. It's a weird looking knot, right? Well, because it's a bend, but. It does work and it sits and it holds those two things together. It's actually fairly simple at the end of the day and it doesn't jam, which is nice. So if there's a lot of tension on this, it'll tighten. And if I pull on it, but it doesn't get stuck on itself. I'm probably gonna do this one a few times, yes? Uh, Rochella asked if the bite, should the bite be the in the thicker or the thinner rope or does it matter? Oh, sorry. In the thicker, that's a great question. You want to make your bite with your thicker rope. Ah. So your thick rope makes the bite. And then you come up through it with your thinner rope. Go around. It's so confusing. Should I get this on camera? Both ends of it. And keep my hands out of the way so you can see. <laughs> Around both ends of the both pieces of the bite and up through this loop here. 
So it's sticking through this piece that came through the hole. And then don't go back through the hole. You just pull up and then pull both pieces of rope and it will tighten on itself. Does it matter how big the bite is? When you, you want to keep it, when you're learning, you can do whatever you need to do to be comfortable in all honesty. This is almost even too big because if I look at how long my tail end is, I have a bit extra rope there, right? So I'd want to shorten it up a bit for myself, but not too bad. Maybe one more time. One more time, for sure. So I make a bite with my thicker rope and my loop. I come through it. I go around both parts of the bite, so both pieces of the string. And then this piece that came up, I bring through that and I pull. And like I said, there's some of these that I have to practice really consistently to remember how to do, and I'll mess them up the first few times I tried them every time. Okay. Um, I'm gonna show you a cool thing about this though. Not to make confusion, just to show something kind of neat, okay? <laughs> so we've got the bite. If I bring this through, and I wrap it around as such. And whereas normally I would go, I would keep it out of the bite of my big one, right? And I would go through the loop of the small rope. If I actually feed this back through the bite of my other rope, and then if I pull, that's another way to do a reef knot. Except I messed up and I did a thief one because I did it backwards. See, my things are on the other end, sorry. Let's start that again. So I start with my loose end of my bite on the top. And I go through and around. And then instead of going back through, I instead feed it through here and then I pull and I get myself there. I'm just showing it because it's kind of neat that the two can make into each other. I find that cool myself, but it's not to confuse. <laughs> right. Does anyone have any questions about the sheep bend or the reef knot? I'm gonna show you some hitches here next. So I wanna show you how to do a clove hitch. Clove hitch is when we need to tie a rope around something else. So you can use it honestly, like on a post, on a tree, on a branch, um, on an arm, on anything. It's quick and easy. You'll use it a lot too if you make shelters or you're making bear hangs. We're not gonna talk about lashings because this is not, it's not lashings and there's all kinds of different types of lashings to learn too in rope work. But the clove hitch is the start to a lot of lashings. So if you want to learn how to get a piece of wood between, like hang your own wood between two trees, you're gonna often do that with lashing and the clove hitch is usually your start move for that as well, okay? So there's lots of different places where it can come in handy. Um, it's quick to make, it's a static knot, so it's not going to move while you're using it, but if there's enough weight on it, it can slip, okay? So don't, don't trust it in a do or die situation is what I'm saying. It's a nice, fast, quick knot to make, um, but know that if something was like, if I was putting a boat in this and that boat was stuck in a hole and was had a lot of pressure and was pulling on it, this is not what I wanna use because that pole is just gonna cause this knot to slip for me. I need something better in that case. 
But if I got it in an eddy and I just want to tie my rope up nice and quick while I run off and do something and it's going to be sitting still, this is great because it's fast and easy that way. Okay. So in order for you to see it, as I said, I'm going to use this little dowel stick here. I'm going to keep the rope on the front end of it so you can see better what I'm doing as I go over it. And again, I can practice doing this too. You can do it over your own arm as you're practicing. Use your arm as the dowel and that's fine as well, okay? So we're on the front of whatever it is I'm wrapping it around. Okay, you can see this at a good angle. And my first thing I honestly do is I just wrap it. Like I just drop it, okay? So it's sitting there. Then I'm going to bring my running end, my free end on this. If I'm looking at it, it's the front side of the rope and I'm gonna cross so it looks like an X. Can everybody see that? So I crossed over towards the back and I have a bit of an X on whatever I'm crossing over. Then I'm going to bring this back up go under so that this comes through the X. Grab this tail and I'm gonna pull it tight and it's gonna tighten up on itself. And that's your clove hitch. Looks like that. So as I said, nice if you're gonna tie something nice and quick and you're not too worried about it, Trail riders often use it too, like they have different quick release knots that they'll use with their horses, but they'll use this as well. If they're just wrapping them around a post or a tree really quick and they're not too worried about the horses. And then if I give it a pull though, super pull, it may slip, right? Usually it'll knot over itself at the very end, which is good, but we can see that it can work its way out. And if it does, then it's going to come off. Um, Pamela was wondering if you could try that same tie with the yellow string. Yes. Okay. So I have whatever I'm tying it to. And my first step is just to make that I just drop it so it's loose around it. Okay. My hair's in there. Then I bring this around and over so it makes an X. Okay. Then I'm going to bring this and feed it through the top string of the X so that it sits in the middle. So it's kind of like that. Hold this and pull it tight. And this is where I talk about tidying and cleaning up your knots a little bit. And at the end of the day, it should look just like that. Do you guys want me to do it one more time? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm having, I think this one's kind of complicated. <laughs> I think like, the other thing I find with knots is if I overthink them, I screw them up every time. And sometimes it's just trusting what you think actually looks like makes sense. It usually does. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna bring my piece of rope and I'm gonna drop it over so that it's hanging. And I'm gonna take my working end, my free end, and I'm going to, and if it's easier for you, bring it up so it looks kind of like a snake end and then cross it over if you want to, just so you remember to cross it over, okay? You wanna cross it so it looks like an X in the front there. I wanna give everybody a chance to get to this point. I'm gonna give myself a little more rope to work with. So we have this sort of strange looking X over whatever we're crossing it on. And I'm gonna take my free end back around and I'm going to put it through 
this top part. And that's the part that might seem unnatural because it feels loose, right? But I want it right in the middle of those two loops, basically. In the middle of my X. And then if I hold that free end and I pull this down, it looks like such. Could you show the back of that knot just to see if mine looks the same both ways? Yeah, this looks like that, kind of like an elephant. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, good. I'm glad Pamela that that helped, right? Because it will, it feels kind of wrong. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Are we, do we want to move on to the next one or how are we feeling about this one? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Sorry, some of the chats pop up, but I don't always see the full sentence. So <laughs> Lindsay's helping me out with that. Okay. Ready for the next one? Okay. As I said, just practice them, right? Like sit in front of the TV. If you're watching a TV show or just hanging out, um, once it stops being frustrating, it can be fairly meditative. This one we just did was a clove hitch. Okay. The next one that I want to do is a round turn with two half hitches. Okay. So again, this one is a super fast tie. So if there's ever something I'm needing to respond to quick on a river and I need to tie my boat or my raft off really quickly to something, this is what I go to. Because once you get it down, you can pull it off super fast, right? Um, but it's not the strongest knot in the world. It's important oh. to know that as well. What was the name of this one again? A round turn and two half hitches. Okay. And this can go around something, you can do it through a loop, you could do it through a carabiner, you can do it on anything that you, as long as you have something to put this rope through. So if you had an eye hook somewhere, um, oddly enough, like when we rafted the Grand Canyon, they have certain spots where you can pull off and park your boats and they have eye hooks put into the side of the wall there. So you can tie your boat off to the hook because there's nothing, there's nothing but rocks. So if you're not on an actual beach where you can pull your boats off, it can be a little bit trickier, right? Um, so we did have, so that's the one we're going to talk about right now. Okay. So this one, the first thing you want to do again, drop it over, whatever you're tying it over or through. And if you guys want, I can show you this on a carabiner as well. After, after we do this, so you can see both ways. The first thing is make sure you just have two full wraps. Okay. So that this goes around twice when you clean up your rope and it looks all nice and neat one is at the front of whatever you're tying it on and one is at the back of whatever you're tying it on that if i show it this way does that help when you can see one's back here and one's here okay. then we take our free end and this next part, don't worry about which way you do it, just do it the same way both times. Okay, and I promise that'll make sense. <laughs> but if you worry about which way you do it, you're more likely to get confused and have something happen. So we're going to take our free end and we're going to wrap it around the string. And then we're just going to do a quick half tie and pull. And we're going to pull that up. Hard to do that and hold this stuff on a surface like this for a second. Half tie and pull. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to wrap it around a second time. I didn't leave myself enough string. Sorry, guys, give me one more second here. I've got this and I go around. And I'm going to come up like just like I'm tying a really quick, almost like a slip knot really quick. Oops, I moved out of the screen and pull it up to that. And then I'm going to do the same thing a second time. And pull it up. 
so that at the end of it, I've got these two little knots at the bottom holding it in place and my free end is in between them, okay? If I've not done them the same way, it'll be pointing, it'll be at the bottom. So as long as I can see that the free end is in between them. And when I actually pull on this, I'm pulling really hard right now. It doesn't give right away. I will do that again and I will try really hard to keep it in the screen. <laughs> but it's super fast to pull and undo and then I just pull that and it's done, right? That's a nice part. See if I can figure out a good way to hook this up. Okay, so. Can you guys see that okay? So I've got my two wraps around whatever it is I'm doing and my one rope is at the front end and my lead rope is at the back end towards me right now when I'm practicing this. Okay. I then take I'll figure out how best to show this loose end around the load end and I wrap it up and I pull it through for a quick little knot, okay? A quick tie at the bottom. Then I come around again. And I'll do it again. Oh, and I think I'm in, and then I end up with that. Um, somebody asked if you could show both sides when you're finished. Oh, for sure. Sorry. That's what the other end looks like. On this one, it looks almost the same on both sides. Want to try one more time? I'll show it once more. Okay, let me get my stick organized. Okay. Go. I'm over it. Sorry. Over it two times. I take my free end around the front. And then maybe if I turn while I'm doing this, that might help. I take my free end around the front part and it kind of makes this little shape and I just am coming through the hole I created, right? So I'm here and I take this around the front and it makes a hole and I wanna feed that rope through that, that free end through that hole that I just created and pull it up. Then I'm going to do that again and I take it around and it makes a bit of a hole, almost like a four. I don't know if that's a forwards four or a backwards four the way you see it, but it makes that. And I'm going to take that end around this piece because that piece is in the front. Once again, through that little hole, pull it tight, Give this a pull, and then I have it. Okay, so that's the back end for me. So that's the end that would be facing you right now. Looks like that. And then the other side is like that. Could you just let me know if this looks right to you? Yes. Okay, sweet. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm a lefty, but it looks backwards sometimes. Well, and it's hard when you're looking on a screen too, right? And trying to follow and, yeah. This one again, it's it's that back to that same feeling of if we think too much on the bottom part of it, like doing this part seems pretty easy, right? Like we we just drop it and then we flip it up and we drop it again. So we basically have dropped it two times. The tricky part is the when you bring it around and it makes that four, not thinking too hard about that and just sticking that loose free end through the hole that exists there and then pulling that up and then bringing it around again, knowing that it's going to make another bit of a hole for us to come through. And then we just come through again and pull it up. Okay. And so that's loose. Like if I was like, I'd want to tighten it up a little bit, tidy it, but. It'll still hold. <laughs> Sorry, T, I just gotta click on that, see what your whole question. It can slip. Um, it's less likely to slip in that same way as the clove hitch one. It's like if you're pulling on it really hard, like I'm pulling pretty hard right now and there's no movement. So this is a nice one to go to, okay? Would I lower a human being down over an edge on this? No. <laughs> We're gonna look at some better knots to do that kind of stuff with, right? But if I'm tying something off really quickly, or um, maybe while I want a nice tie for the bottom of my bear hang, right? Like I've got my bear hang up and I've pulled it down and I wanna tie something really quick to that low end of a tree further down. This is a really good one to do for that. It'll withhold the weight and it'll sit there nice. And so that's the round turn with two half hitches. It's a long name. All right, cool. So the next thing I want to show you is a munter's hitch. A munter's hitch is cool because it's a dynamic hitch. The ones that we've looked at so far are more static, right? Like they're not moving while they sit there. If they're starting to move, we're in trouble. Um, a dynamic one, this one purposely is designed to help manage the friction. And it's really cool, you're going to see, because we can move the rope in two ways while we're doing it. It doesn't jam. Um, and it's actually self-regulating. Like if the load gets heavier, it will tighten on itself to slow down the movement naturally, which is really cool, All right? So this actually, if there was like a cool factor to knots, I do find this one really cool. I think it's neat in the way that it works. We're gonna clip this one into the carabiner so that you can see it. And we're gonna look at it that way. So, you're gonna take your rope and just anywhere, so long as you have a little loop like this in your two hands, okay? Doesn't matter where we do this in the rope, as long as we have this. We're going to make a loop. Can you say the name one more time? Munter's Hitch. Okay. Okay. And in this loop, my, one rope is on the front, like you can see there's, this is the front end towards you guys and this is the back end towards me. That matters because I'm going to make a second loop just down from it. And I don't want it to be the same. I don't want this piece to be up front on both ends. I want it to be opposite, okay? Sorry, I'm apparently shedding. I keep finding all my hair in these ropes as I'm trying to do this and I'm ignoring it, but it's starting. <laughs> okay, so I have two little Mickey Mouse type ears in front of me. The difference being 
this one is open on the front end and this one is open on the back end. That's the piece that matters. If they're not open on opposite ends, it will not work and it'll fall on you and you'll know right away. Okay, so I have my two little ears. Then really, I'm going to just bring them together. Um, I always, just because of how I do it, the one in my right hand goes behind the one in my left hand. So that I have this, looks like one loop. I take my carabiner and I clip it so it's in both strings. And then when I pull, it looks like this. The beauty is I can pull on this side and my rope's going to come. I should clip this to something. I could pull on this side and my rope's going to move. Okay. Here, maybe you can see it better. So then we can see how it's dynamic, right? It actually shifts as we pull and gives space. Often this, this will be used if we need to lower something down a large distance or even with a good secure knot on the other end and a really good secure carabiner or top base, they can use this to lower people too. Um, and it's sort of, it's been used that way in mountaineering before. But it's cool because you can move your rope both ways. So let's I'll look at it another time. We'll do it again. Is the yellow rope easier to see than the striped rope? Does it make a difference? Okay, as long as it's okay to see either way, that's all that matters. So I make my first loop and that one for me is opening that way. Then I make my second loop in the opposite direction. So it's opening this way. Yellow is using perfect. Okay. And then I just cross them over so that they become one circle. And if I didn't have a carabiner, I could probably try to show this on my thumb. And then once I loop that through and I just pull, then it tightens on to itself as such. Okay. And then as I pull one way, it'll move. It's twisting up a little bit. When you pull the other way, it'll move. I want to try it one more time. First loop. Stiff. And our second loop. Looks like little bunny ears. Again, like when you're trying to teach a kid to tie their shoes. <laughs> and then we just close those together so that they become one loop. Hook whatever it is we're hooking through them, pull it tight, and then we've got our moving. Oops, sorry, that you can't see that. There it's moving that way, and the hair it's moving the other way. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get the camera thing right. It took me a while to figure this one out. I think I would turn my loops the wrong way and they wouldn't connect with each other, right? But if you don't do it right, it crosses and then it's not going to move in the same way. Okay. 
How's everybody feeling about that one? Sort of okay? Okay. This next one I'm gonna show you is called the bowline. Uh, after this one, we've got three more. So we're gonna do nine knots in total tonight that we're gonna look at, but we're gonna do a couple of variations of figure eights, all right? The bowline is probably one of the, like this is the knot you wanna know. Out of everything that we're looking at today, if you can figure out a bowline and a figure eight, you can pretty much tie off anything, anywhere, anytime, okay? And you'll be fine. So these ones are important. Um, they're really handy to have in your back pocket. Bowline is great because what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a loop, like a lasso kind of loop style that we can put either go around something with or they'll use it in emergency rescue situations because you can actually tie it with one hand. So if someone's hurt, they'll lower a rope down to them and they can tie a bowline around themselves and then you can haul them up. It can withstand insane amounts of stress and pressure. It is a super, super strong knot. And the beauty of it is it doesn't get jammed on itself. You can always undo it because there's other knots we're going to look at that are super strong, but when they get really tight, they suck to undo. Bowline has a trick to it, so you can undo it, okay? What I want you to do is we're going to practice tying it around ourselves. That's honestly the easiest way to do it. Um, I'm right-handed. So for me, it works well to keep the free end in my right hand. So I actually go around myself on my left side first and I bring it around so that this free end is here in my right hand. And this is the end that would have the load on it, okay? So my free end is in my right and the other piece is there. Now, this is the part where I have always struggled and I, Okay, I think I got it right. So when I'm looking down at the bowline, with this piece that's going to take the load, I want to make what looks to me like a six. It'll look to you like a nine, okay? When you're looking on the screen, I hope it looks like a nine, maybe a P, I'm not sure. <laughs> with mirroring and stuff. But if I'm looking down at it, it's a six. That's one of the most important things. The second most important thing about the way this six looks is the piece of rope that's gonna still have the load and pressure on it. So not the piece leading behind me, but the piece going away from me has to be on the bottom of that six, okay? So my six has to exist so that here's my loop and this piece here that's gonna go away from me is the bottom leading away piece of that six. Okay, so the where the two are stacked. Yeah, for sure. I can try and see if that works. Where the two of these are stacked, this one, the top one of the stack is the one going around my side. And the bottom one of the stack is the one that's leading away from me. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So these two ropes are stacked. The top of the stack is going around me. The bottom of the stack is leading away from me. Right. I then am going to take my free end and this is where the silly little story comes in. I'm going to hold my loop, okay? And this is a bunny now. We've got our little rabbit. <laughs> and our rabbit is going to come out of the hole because it needs to come from below and come up to look at the world. So we bring this out. So we have a rabbit out looking at the world. Now this is the end that's going away from me. Let's pretend it's a tree. The rabbit's feeling curious. So if I stand up, maybe you can see a little bit better. The rabbit's feeling curious. It's going to go not over top, but underneath towards me around the tree. Okay. It comes around the tree, decides, 
above ground is not for it, it's still scared, goes back in the hole where it first came from. Want me to do that part again? So somebody asks, can you turn the side to the side while you make your six and then top root of loop to free friend? Okay. So I think we got the six part to the side a little bit, right? Like we're here and then I make my six in such a way so that it looks like this. This is how it goes. So the top is still around me. The loose end is here going away from me and that's my little loop of my six and then i got my rabbit friend who's going to come out of the hole to go exploring go exploring around the tree not like it and go back in the hole <laughs> So it looks like such, and this is that too. Okay. Once I have this, then I just pull this tight, and this is what it'll look like, and that's your bowline, okay? You pull the load end tight, and it tightens this right up, and when it's around your waist and you're yanking on this, you can pull this so crazy hard. Okay, it can take a ton of weight and pressure and strength. And what it does is it gives us this loop that we're tied around. So this is now hooked around my tree or my human or whatever it is I needed to tie this around. This can also be used um, if you're trying to get a tarp, like and you're going through the grommets and you want a good knot to make a little smaller loop, but on a tarp grommet to do a shelter and stuff like that. This is a great one, just on a much smaller scale than we just did it, right? Your loop is smaller. Okay. The beauty of this is if you pull it super tight and it feels jammed, when you flip it, this, can you guys see that? This piece right here, when you flip it, will always move which will loosen your knot so you can untie it. So this will not jam on you. A water knot will get tight and hard to undo. A figure eight will get tight and hard to undo. Um, they all can do the same thing as a bowline, but the bowline, you can always do that flip there and that will undo really nice and easy. Is it easier to see if I stand up when I do it? We make our loop, right? We go through, bunny comes out, bunny goes around the tree, comes back down the hole on the opposite side that it came up in, so that this isn't crossing and it looks like such. And then if I just even hold this loose end and I pull this end that's going away from me, it will tighten up into the bowline, which at the end of the day looks like such. Okay. And then the back of it looks a bit harder to twist because it's on me, but it looks like that. And that's where that part is. If it's pulled so tight, we can just move this, this little loop here right now this will always move. So we will always be able to loosen it enough to untie it. Did, I, did that get sorted for you, Rochelle, or do you need me to do it again? Perfect. Good. Are you guys feeling ready to move on to the next one? All right. If I hear no complaints, we'll go forward. <laughs> All right. Cool. So
So figure eight is our next knot. Figure eights are awesome because they're strong, okay? You can also use them as a stopping knot to do something, right? Like if you need your, to go so far along your rope and then just quit, throwing a figure eight anywhere in your rope can make that nice little stopper so that something won't slide past it. Um, but it is a nice strong note not to know how to do. We're gonna look at a couple different versions of it. The first one, I just want you again to make a loop. I'm gonna push this back a bit maybe so we can see it a little bit better. Can you see the loop on there? So have your loop hanging in front of you, hold it in the middle. And then all I want you to do is holding both ends of it nice and easy. I want you to turn it once, and then I want you to turn it twice. Okay, so we've got our loop. Turn it once and turn it twice. You're then going to take this free end and bring it up around behind and through the loop that you were holding. So that looks like that. And then we just tighten it up. And we know we got it right because it looks like an eight. <laughs> okay. If it looks like a nine, what we did was when we went to bring this rope up through the twist, we probably brought it up through the front instead of the back. And then we kind of get this little mix like that. Looks like a pretzel, really. Okay, that's the mistake you'll see from it. So we just have our loop. We go one, two, bring our free piece in. We can see that eight starting already, so we know we're on the right track. And then we just would tighten it up, right? Could I add something? Yeah. Um, sometimes, um, when you do it, you'll get a knot that looks like this, like a pretzel like that. If you just flip it like that, then it's a figure eight knot. And it'll fix itself, right? Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> now, we're going to look at just a few variations of figure eights quick because it's a handy knot, right? It's really, really strong and it can have a lot of different purposes. I use it all the time to tie up my dog, actually. Like if we're out and about and I need to make a leash for her, or a quick leash around a tree or something like that. Um, so this time we're gonna make an actual bite. So we're gonna get a loop and then we're gonna bend. I wanna make this big enough so you can see it, but not so messy. We're gonna bend our loop. So we've got two ropes on either side of our, okay? So it's the same idea as a loop like we did before, except now we have two. Okay, and we're gonna treat this like our free end. Then we turn it one time, two times. We take our loop up through the top and we pull it. And this is a double figure eight. So it's really, really strong. And I've got something to clip to right here. Okay. We'll show that one one more time. So I decide where I want my bite to be and then I make my bend in the rope. I'm treating this loop side like my free end now. I do one, two turns, bring this up through the hole. There we go. And then I tidy it up because I don't like how it looks right now. <laughs> this is really handy because really you can make it anywhere. So if you were at a certain part in the rope and you suddenly needed something to clip on, you could create this if you had enough rope in front of you, okay? It doesn't have to be at the end of a rope.
The other figure eight one that's good to know is a figure eight follow through. So you just start by making your regular figure eight. So we twist two times, we come up and we have our eight, right? But this is now I wanna tie it to something. So I'm gonna go around the chair that I've got in front of there now. And I'm going to tie this so that I have it hooked up to something, okay? The important thing when you're doing a follow through is that you keep it clean and that your follow through is tidy. So if you need to loosen this to do so, that's okay, that doesn't matter right now. You want it to be able so that you can follow it. And then you're going to take your free end. And now that I've put this on the top end of this rope, it doesn't matter which side it goes, as long as I follow it, I need to make sure that I keep it in the same spot as I go through and do my follow through. Try to keep my fingers out of the way. So there it's following. This this is where people might cross over, right? So you want to make sure you keep it on the inside of that next part you're following through. And this is where we talk about cleaning up and dressing up our knots a little bit. And then now I'd come through this way. And then through the top there. And when I look at it afterwards, it should look nice and neat and there's no crisscrosses. Right. So we want to make sure when we do our figure it follows throughs that we keep it clean and it's clean on both ends, front or back. I would have ideally given myself a bit more rope to pull through there. <laughs> Once you know how to do a figure eight though, you'll know how to do a figure eight follow through. Cause you just got to get that figure eight in there and then you hook this up too. All I did to the leg of the step, that stool that I have the computer sitting on. This is if you want to tie it to something, you can do that nice and easy. Did you guys want to see that one again or how do we feel about figure eight follow throughs? Everybody seems okay. Okay, cool. We're hanging in there. This has been a long, a long time of looking at rope. I only have two more I want to show you, I promise. <laughs> All right. Um, this is the one I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to show you. I love alpine butterfly knots because you can make them anywhere in a rope and they're just really cool. Anytime you need a loop in a unique spot in a rope, this is a really wonderful thing to go to. It's also really handy if say that my rope was wearing right here and I actually didn't trust this piece, I could do an alpine butterfly knot to put that into a loop so that all the pressure is taken off of it and the pressure is now being held by the rope that I have faith in. And I'm actually like decreasing the chance of that rope breaking on me, right? And I'm protecting that wear there. So there's lots of different things you can do with it. And again, it's another one I'll use with that in a carabiner to clip to my dog's collar quick if I need to. Um, and then try to do my best to set this up so we can follow along with it on my hand. <laughs> okay, so can you see my hand? Okay, you're gonna have your rope across your hand with it just like lying across your palm, okay? You're gonna take the side by your pinky and you're going to go around the tops of your fingers like such, okay? And then you're going to continue around, try to keep my hand out of the way, and you're going to come over so that it's sitting like this, like such. Okay. I'm then gonna take this loop at the top of my hand, and I'm going to pull it over these two pieces, like such. Okay. I then take this loop and I tuck it underneath the two pieces, 
I may have to pull some rope loose, but it doesn't matter. This one might not look pretty at the start, but it will after, I promise. So my loop is now under those two. And then I'm gonna let it slip off my hand, holding on to the loop. That's the part I need to keep track of right here is this little loop at the top that I just slid underneath. Then I'm gonna pull this. And this is where my little alpine butterfly starts to come into being. So now I've created a pretty little loop in the middle of my rope that I can either hook things to, or if this was the wear part, I got that out of being in a place of stress, it's now protected and it's set up there. Looks like this on the other side. You guys want to see it one more time? Okay. And again, it's pretty easy to undo as long as if there's super stress on it, it'll be hard. But if you just push the loop back through the holes, it'll come undone fairly easy. So I start with the rope across my hand. I take the end on my pinky side and I make a loop around the top of my fingers. I then take that and I wrap it and come around so that it looks like such. I have these two here. Oops, can you see? And then I pull this piece over the two, the double. I tuck it underneath the double. I can take it off my hand then and just to hold on to that piece I tucked under. And then I start to tidy it up. And just clean it and play with it. So I get it looking nice and neat. Once you get this one figured out, it feels so slick because you're just wrapping it around your fingers and it looks like you're playing with rope, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden you've got this fancy little. <laughs> How are we feeling about that one? I think we're doing good. Okay. We just got one left. And I'll show it to you quick. Um, it's a water knot. I'm gonna show it to you with on webbing because that's usually what we use it on. It, the beauty of a water knot is it's super strong, okay? We use it to create anchors if we're needing to do rope work and system work on the river and I need a webbing anchor to go around a tree or something. I also use it with all my guides. Um, every guide carries a flip line, which is a piece of webbing and a carabiner that allows them to flip a boat upright if it is to go upside down just by clipping into a D-ring on the side. So they use this knot to make their flip line the right size to fit them appropriately, okay? And it, you can use it with regular rope too. It's just easier to follow on webbing because the, in all honesty, because the lines on the webbing, right? Like only one side has, lines on it so when you're making sure you follow through neat you can use that as your guide which is lovely all it is is you do a regular overhand knot on one side and then you just keep it looking nice and neat that's really that's what it is it's just a regular overhand knot but then i take the opposite piece and I follow through. So I come in on the long end, the free end. And just like in my figure eight follow through, the important thing is that I keep everything nice and neat and tidy and I keep myself in the same spot as I'm following through. Once I get through, 
then I would want to pretty it up. So I try to make things line up nicer. Okay. And that's what it is. And I know I've got it because I've got my two ends on either side. And when I pull, this can withstand a lot. It is tons of tight, it tons of strength. We use this for pin drafts and things like that if we need to move them. So we're talking like thousands of pounds of pressure of the are, is pulling on the rope that is attached to this as an anchor. So it's a crazy strong knot. It's ridiculously strong. However, if it has a lot of pressure and tension put on it, it's also ridiculously hard to undo. It will become incredibly tight in this little piece here. Okay. How it is right now, it won't be bad at all. And I'll just slip the pieces out. So I'll just show it to you one last time. If I take my one piece, I just do a regular overhand knot. I would to do and tie anything really. <laughs> okay, it's just a normal knot. If I keep it kind of loose, because I'm going to bring my other side through. And it comes up, follows around, making sure that it follows nice and neat inside. And away we go. And then we pull it like that. And that's it. That's your water knot. I don't know if anyone is doing anything in their life where they're ever going to need to tie webbing together. Um, but it's awesome. This knot's a good one for that. <laughs> so I did want to share it. We use it a lot in the white water world. Any questions? Those were all the knots I wanted to share tonight because those, I figure if you can get those eight or nine knots in your back pocket, you're solid, right? There's really not much you're not going to be able to figure out and to do out in the woods. Um, if eight or nine feels like too many to memorize, master your bowline and your figure eight and you'll be good. If you can throw a hitch in there as well, even better and then you're pretty much ready to go. Thank you so much. That was amazing. And it's lots of practice ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, like that's the thing is it's time, right? And just doing it again and again so it starts to feel natural, intuitive. Um, and then refreshing yourself. Every spring, I have to remind myself because I don't really use them a lot in the winter to tell you the truth, right? <clears throat> Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so every spring I have to be, it's the bowl line gets me every time. That's six, I fought with that six for years. <laughs> until I got it right <laughs> cool well this was amazing I'm just super grateful for you taking your time and this was just so informative and um really excited to share yeah share this with everybody and I'll get the like video linked up and send out to everybody within the next week here so will everybody who was here today get the video yep, too? I'll email everybody on the eventbrite with a link and it'll go to YouTube and there'll have a password probably a password YouTube video or nice. figure it out so yeah so should all work and anybody can email me if they have any questions so and thanks to everybody who joined us again sorry we had technical difficulties at the beginning but nice that everybody could make it so thank you all for making it in thank you guys so much Thank you. I can't wait for rafting season either, Megan. I'm 